So with this being video 11, we are now more than halfway through this series of updating all builds for the 21 perk decks. Interested in what's done so far? Well, I'm glad you asked. <sighs> Rogue, Grinder, Anarchist, Hacker, Sociopath, Kingpin, Burglar, Hitman, Stoic and Ex-Presidents. Playlist in the description below with all the past and all future videos. To catch everyone up, if you're new that is. Basically, Payday 2 is being updated again. I'm making up to date builds for all 21 perk decks. Holy shit. These are all death sentence one down difficulty builds, playing less than that and you're a pussy. Each build will have some crossovers or will have Inspire and Nine Lives aced. Painkiller's aced is not better than Quicks Fixed aced. Facts. Each build will be using Max Infamy with a video on screen and linked in the description. Going to try and use some different weapons to accentuate the builds and make them fun. Not every build will have the Isma shotgun, even though I would like them to. All builds will have been tested for at least two minutes in order to validate my claims. I will give some playstyle ideas and some map suggestions where the build may find you more success. Click like if you like this video and subscribe if you are new. This video's perk deck of choice is Muscle, a perk deck that makes you think tanky builds and being strong, and a perk deck that was part of the original perks but have seen some changes over the years. I'm always angry. One major change that Muscle saw was an update that made a move from a standalone tanky perk to a health regen perk. Within that time also had a change from improving just armor to now improving health. The muscle deck now focused solely on increasing your health and health regen, granting an 80% increase in health alone along with the health regen of 3% every 5 seconds. At 414 health we are looking at a little over 12th health each tick. There are also some other notables when looking at this perk deck, one of which is the ability to cause panic. Now this is one of those deep payday 2 mechanics that along with the threat value of your weapon causes enemies to lower their heads, miss shots, become less accurate and finally abandon their objective completely and run for cover. This process is built up over time or as expressed in the Payday 2 long guide as building up suppression. There are many many technical factors that go along with this, everything from distance, angle, enemy type, timing and others, so please take a read if you're interested. I wanted to note it here as it can be a viable mechanic with this deck as you get an increase naturally by equipping the perk deck. The muscle deck comes in with a 20% base chance to cause panic. Make sure if you want to take fully advantage of this particular asset do not equip a silencer on your weapon. It negates this effect and different weapon types also carry more of a chance so SMG is given less of a chance than LMGs for example. To further compound its effectiveness let's aim for a high threat weapon. Last thing to note on this deck is a 15% increase in target chance when you are close to your crew members. Researching whether the optical illusion skills combat this it seems like it does. Optical Illusions Basic of course offering a 35% less target chance and Muscle offering an increase of 15. There again is some technical multiplication surrounding this but what I found was is that it lands you somewhere at a 25% less target chance overall, outweighing the Muscle Perk Deck's effect. This of course would change if others are using Optical Illusions in your squad so I'll leave this one up to you to figure that out. Now as we move to the first section of this build we of course approach the hot topic of armor and which to choose. Back in the day when the armor statistic was boosted by the Perk Deck choosing a high armor was first choice for sure. Now, now with no armor boost from the perk deck it puts us in the position of wondering whether the heaviest armor is actually any benefit on death sentence difficulty. Of course there are many different enemies that we encounter all of which do different amounts of damage and at different ranges also deal different amounts. The majority of enemies we come up against on death sentence deal more damage than the 221 that wearing the ICTV armor gives us. So regardless of whether we wear the armor or even the two piece suit our armor is gone in one hit. Now where this can differ slightly is if we take hits from enemies that don't carry that much weight with their hits like medics and even bulldozers from certain distances. With the heavier armor we can tank these shots pretty well whereas just wearing a suit our armor is still just one shot away from fully breaking most of the time. With that being said for both camps I'll show a couple of variables, one with the suit which I seem to have the most fun with and then one that most people probably identify with when they think tank builds using the ICTV. Of course everything in between is also available to everyone so as always try them all and choose which one you like the most just like I did. For my 
muscle suit build, here's what I go with. Our friend Inspire Ace grabbing quick fix Ace on the way. Joker skills to gain some help with the two converts, but also picking up the movement speed increase and 30% health. The 30% health now gets our total health statistic to 538, which is the tankiest we can get here. That's a couple of heavy SWAT hits and some other lesser enemies thrown in there too. And utilizing headshots with Bullseye, we can grab our armor back and give us some serious survivability. In conjunction with the Joker skills, we pick up Hostage Taker Ace. This complements the muscle perk deck with its health regen, adding a further 4.5% every 5 seconds, boosting the total now to 7.5% every 5 seconds. A quick point in Stable Shot for more stability. Next in Enforcer, grabbing a couple of alternates here, or more like my personal preferences. Underdog Basic for a damage increase when enemies are close, and its Resilience Ace for flashbang help and armor recovery. Die Hard for damage reduction when interacting, Transporter for bag moving, Shock and All for more armor recovery, and Bullseye Basic for headshot armor recovery. The only mandatories I would state in this section are just Resilience Ace and Bullseye Basic. The rest are free to go elsewhere, but I just like it for some quality of life improvements. In Technician, as we are going for a high threat weapon, LMG, grabbing Steady Grip Aced, Fire Control Basic, Surefire Ace, Lock and Load Aced, and finally Body Expertise Aced. With all this, we get big accuracy and stability increases along with a bigger magazine, ability to hip fire, and then be able to shoot our enemies through their armor and inflict a portion of headshot damage to their body shots. Don't also forget the increase in reloading our slow LMGs with Lock and Load Ace saves so much time. These skills also work if you're going to go with an assault rifle instead of an LMG. In Ghost, just grab mobility skills, duck and cover and parkour basic, then onto second wind and optical illusions basic. Like I said earlier, optical illusions from what I can research works against the muscle penalty, but is negated if others in your crew use it, so a definite alternate. I also like parkour aced here for run and reload, especially with second wind aced. You have to get the hell out of there fast. I also like how I value targeting muscle builds just to get more damage on marked enemies from a distance, so potential to grab this with some points from the enforcer tree if not needed over there. Last but certainly not least is Nine Lives Aced in the Fugitive Tree. Now for the heaviest armor version. Again, please note the speaking points around the amount of armor and specifically on Death Sentence. The majority of the time your armor is still a one-shot hit, unless you get swarmed by medics, cloakers, and faraway bulldozers. Heavy armor works way more effectively on lower difficulties where you can sustain more of the less harmful shots. Anyways, here it is. Same in Mastermind as before, just removing Confident Ace. In Enforcer, Resilience, Transporter, and Iron Man Aced, Bullseye and Shock and Awe Basic, Technician, Steady Grip Aced, Surefire Aced, Body Expertise Aced, and Lock and Load Basic. Mobility again in Ghost, Duck and Cover and Parkour Basic, Fugitive is just 9 lives aced. Now let's take a look at the weapons. Like I said before, LMG for this one, equipped as best we can for accuracy and stability, but remember we're going for maximum threat level here to make those bitches cower and cover. I've been playing the Buzzsaw a lot, but spent a lot of time with a KSP also. Find your favourite here for sure. The highest threat stat is 43, and there are only 3 barrel extensions that can achieve this. Funnel of Fun, Marmon, and Fire Breather. All of those are fine. For secondary, I love something explosive. My go-to is the Compact GL for its high damage and ammo pickup, but also love the Arbiter China Puff and the Team Killer Commando Rocket Launcher. Throwable is the Concussion, melee is whatever you like, I just prefer something to be able to stop cloaker charges, so buzzer, electric knuckles, etc. Playstyle with this perk deck and build is to be daring. You have limited armor, but extremely high health when you've got jokers, solid and stable regen, and the ability to make your enemies panic. With the high output, high threat weapons, keep firing, hitting headshots, and you'll get your armor back from Bullseye. Surefire Ace will make sure your body shots hit also, and then the amount of panic that you will spread will make your enemies ineffective. Definitely a lot of fun to go full Rambo mode. Maps that are good for this deck, while well, I've played all types and had success. Birth of Sky, Slaughterhouse, Beneath the Mountain, Boiling Point, you name it, this build can do it, with minimal downs if you let the health regen do its thing when needed. Anyways, give it a try, say hi to Muscle Crow for me.
Joker's down. 